So let's draw, um, I'm gonna draw a full face here. I'll, I'll give it a little bit more render detail. Uh, so let's, let's just go ahead and mask this in. Remember center of the uh, face is gonna be where we have our eye sockets. And eyebrows come up above that. Glabella uh, from the eyebrow to the bottom of the chin. Divide that in half. That's going to be the center of the, no the bottom of the nose. All right, and you can always move it up, a uh, up and down a little bit. Um, and then the lips come about a third of the way down. The center of the lips should come about a third of the way down. Okay? All right. I'm going to just mask this in real quick. Jawline at the mouth. Use a six B. exactly how I might start a, a, a portrait, okay? Very, loose, very loosely, um, I have, I would have made some uh, determinations about, um, about spacing and about sizes, relative sizes of things, obviously. Um, but it, it starts very loosely. Okay, your drawing has to start loosely. Okay. So, uh, uh, let me just take another minute here, and I'm going to put some value here on the side. Okay, and uh, uh, the reason I'm, I'm doing this value is just so that I have enough charcoal on the surface uh, and I'm, I, can, uh, I can go ahead and wipe, okay? Because I've got a large area that I haven't touched with charcoal at all, okay? So I want to make sure that I've got enough charcoal in the background where this will get covered. Um, I'm going to have, obviously, our light source is coming in this direction. Let me add a little bit more. Uh, I want to cover about 50% to 70%, okay? I don't want to get much further than that. He's going to be bald. That's just the way it is, okay? And we'll take a cloth and we will wipe, trying to get it even, trying to not have any streakiness. Okay, as little streakiness as possible. If I'm getting some streakiness, I'll add some more charcoal. Maybe it could be in. What's that? Maybe on. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aren't you glad I mentioned that? So when we're, and that's good, when we're, when, we're, when we're doing children, right, one of the things that we want to do is we want to bring the eyes a little lower on the face, okay? Um, uh, because typically what happens is the, uh, the cranium is larger on a, on a child, not, not that it's larger than the adult, but it's larger in proportion uh, to the face, okay? The face is typically going to be a little bit, a little bit smaller, okay? All right, let me continue to add a little bit more charcoal here. 
All right. I think I can mess with that a little bit. All right. Um, so let's uh, uh, let's work on the nose first, right? Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow my core shadow. And here I have to kind of make it up, obviously. Follow my core shadow around the face. Here it's going to fall across the filtrum. And it might create a, a different shape. It's going to fall across the lip. That core shadow will. Under the lip. Over the chin. And, uh, and around the base of the uh, of the jaw. Okay. Into the eyebrow. Whatever that eyebrow might be doing. One of the things about the eyebrow when you go to, when you go to draw it, uh, when you're ready to put the texture of the eyebrow in, think of the way the hair lays as it's as it's coming around the eye. Those hairs are going to lay start laying flat. Okay. So up at the beginning of the eyebrow, the hairs are going to be up and down. As it goes across the eye, those hairs are going to lay flat. Okay? So we might come in and, and, and do a little bit of that. Uh, let's go ahead and, and draw this eyeball here. Remember, our, our head is going to be how, how, how many eyes wide? Five. Five. So we want to make sure that we have approximately one eye width of space in between, right? And we would put that next eye here. I'm not going to do much detailing on this eye. Okay? Remember that the, um, the height or the highest point of the eye, the highest, the, the biggest width of the, um, of the pupils is going to be where, uh, of the eyelids is going to be where the pupil is, okay? Um, let's go ahead and figure out where the shadow of the nose is. Let's give that a definite form. Here it's going into the core shadow of the cheek. All right. There's a little pull from the inside of the eye. There, it's a muscle there. Don't ask me what it's called. I don't remember. Okay. I should have gone another way. Okay. Center of the lips. The edges of the lips. Uh, how far do the lips come, typically? Middle of the eye, the center of the eyeball, okay? A little shadow on the upper lip. And again, watching the shape of that lip is going to be important. So far, so good? Looking good. I really want to try and give him like a little split down his nose. We'll see if that works or not. Okay. The glabella is typically going to be a downward facing plane. And what you want to do is, is you want to see um, where is the eye, where is the glabella, where are the, where are the pupils, uh, where are the uh, eye, eyebrows. Again, everything is in relationship to everything else. Okay. We just want to check and, and see that everything makes sense. Here I'm going to give uh, um, the light side some value. We'll make the side of the nose here a little bit brighter and the top of the nose a little bit brighter. We'll, we'll, there's a, a, usually where the wings of the nose uh, come in, there's a little sit core. Uh, it's like flesh, the, the, the wing of the nose is almost like sitting on top of the, um, on top of the skin there. So we'll, we'll usually see a little sit core there, okay, for that wing of the nose. 
nostril. Doesn't look like much right now. As soon as I get in with my uh, Prisma color, you'll see that's going to pop out. Okay. Here's the nasal labial furrow. I want to keep it soft. I don't want it to become a strong dark line. I don't want the side of the nose to become a strong dark line. Let's come in and soften that a little more. I do want a different value between the side of the nose and the top of the nose. So I'm going to make the top of the nose a little bit brighter here in just a second. Okay. So uh, we talked uh, briefly last time about uh, something called Rembrandt lighting. Anybody remember what that is? That's the triangle. Yes, the little triangle of light on, on one side of the cheek. So the shadow of the nose is going to blend right into the shadow of the side of the face. Okay, And this is then a cast shadow. And so what do you know about cast shadows? They're soft. And, oh, oh and boy. Dry. Okay, all right. There's, there's sharp edges, right? Cast shadows have sharp edges. I think you were just playing with me, weren't you? I was. I thought so. Okay. And this is a core shadow. So a core shadow has soft, rounded edges. Okay. Um, all right. So you can see the, uh, the bottom of the nose here starting to take shape. Let me just blend this a little bit more. Uh, so that I can, I, I, what I'm doing is I'm really just kind of picking up some charcoal with my finger so that I can create this coarse shadow even stronger. And I'm going to have to come in with my Conti crayon here because I can't get any darker. Alright, here we go. And remember that the nostril is going to be darkest where? Hmm. Which edges? The edge that's closest to you. So the edge that's coming forward here, the top edge here, that's the edge that's closest to me. That's the edge that's going to be sharp. And then it's going to blend away into the, into the skin. Okay. We're already starting to have a little, uh, the effect of reflected light into the, into the nose. I don't know how much that we can see on the video. But that's life. Okay. A little variation between the bridge of the nose and the cartilage. Okay, maybe a stronger core shadow there. All right. I'm only going to draw one eye. No point in doing both here. So again, finding the right shape. The lacrimal duct. <coughs> God bless you. Is there a fold or is there not a fold there? Okay. Um, when we're doing the eyeball uh, and the pupil. So, uh, all right, fine. We'll draw the eyeball to you. Okay. Um, when I'm doing the iris, I'm creating this kind of texture right here. All right. Uh, the iris is, is a gorgeous, amazing thing. You've all seen eyes up close, right? The pupil is going to get dark, except for one little spot. Okay. 
Uh, and then, obviously, that's going to be your highlight. Depending on where your light's coming from, okay, that's where the highlight's going to be. Um, the, uh, the lens is going to have its own highlight, usually somewhere, and I like to put it across, across the iris and across the sclera or the white of the eye, okay? The eyelid, upper eyelid, is going to have a cast shadow, right? The, the eye, because it's a ball, is going to be shaded in on the sides. And then we're going to have the lower eyelid, which is going to have its own shadow. And it's going to have a little bright edge. That little bright edge represents the... Um, the top of that eyelid, or the top of that eyelid. Remember, looking at the eye from the side, the lower eyelid comes out. The lower eyelid comes out and around the eye, right? Just like the upper eyelid comes out around there, that way. Okay. So here I am shading in the lower eyelid, and I'll pull that little highlight. Uh, of the upper eye, uh, of the upper plane of that lower lid in a minute. Um, come a little further, and we'll do a core shadow on the lips. Now I'm really getting into it, huh? Core shadow on the lips, Leo? Jeez, you put those things everywhere. I do. There's the filtrum again. Bring out the conti. The corners of the mouth are typically going to be darker than the, the center of those lips. Okay, the center of the top lip. There might even be a little catch light on this little uh, uh, center piece of the mouth. So there's a cast shadow on the lip, from the upper lip. And the more of these details that you put in, the more realistic your drawing gets, the more, um, the more accurate your drawing gets. Okay, so this all started with me doing the, the pupil. Uh, okay, so let's put the... Now, thing is, about, uh, about catch lights in the eye, um, two scores of, of thought, okay? Um, if you see it, put it in, obviously, right? But very often you don't see it. Um, and so that becomes more of a, a glamour situation. You have to make a decision. Do I want to put that in or not? Do I, do I need it to go in there? Okay, let me just lighten that eye a little bit. So it's a decision. If you don't see it, whether you put it in or not. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a, a little eraser here, and I'm going to erase gently a little white area, not white, but a little light gray area, and that's to represent the, the upper plane of the lower lid. I'll put a little light here, perhaps. This lid is coming out in front of the light. In front of the brow, rather. Okay. Um, this is cast shadow from the eye. And the cast shadows have sharp edges. We already talked about that.
want to use a tiny fiddly little pencil eraser when I should be using a muted eraser. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's pull a little highlight. Down the center of the nose here. There's usually a, a little highlight right here in the in the corner between the nasal labial furrow and the wing of the nose. That's something to look for. Another thing to look for is uh, if you've got a younger person, uh, usually the lips curl back. And so you get a little even brighter little line that goes around the top lip. Just get a little edge of bright around that top lip. Okay, some texture in the upper lip, in the lower lip, I'm sorry, created by some, with some little highlight. Um, soften that a little bit and then come back and pull out the highlight. Two forms, two highlights. So this is a split in the cartilage. And so I'm putting two little highlights there. Soften that. Put a little highlight right here on the bridge of the nose. Okay. Uh, as we come down, there's going to be a highlight on the chin, perhaps two, again, if, there, if there's a split there, there's a cleft chin. We'll get the, the node of the mouth. I'll exaggerate it a little bit here. Highlight in, I can go ahead and put that highlight in. I'll make a highlight in the light area of that upper eye of that lower eyelid as well as that upper eyelid. Okay. Sometimes you can make uh, make the eyes look wet by adding some more little highlights, little, little points of highlight, and this you might have to come up close for to be able to see. I don't know that you can see this from back there. Time to pull out some charcoal pencils. There's only so much you can do with a charcoal stick. I'm going to refresh the cast shadow from the upper eyelid. Throw a little shadow on this side of the eyeball. I'm looking for too is reflected light in the eye socket. 
All right, in this case, I don't want to take up, I don't want to erase there, because I don't want to pick up too much charcoal. But I can just come in maybe with a little bit of cloth and take some of that down on that side. If that's enough, I can stop or I can try the chamois. Let's try the chamois, see if it doesn't go too far. That's good. Okay, so some reflected light there, perhaps some reflected light on the edge of the wing of the nose. Now I'm getting really fussy. And you could spend 40 hours on a drawing with more detail and, and just slowly going at it, a little more highlight, a little more this, a little more that, uh, nudging this one way, nudging this that way. Okay, let me just pull a little reflected light here maybe. Uh, one thing sometimes you'll see too is a little reflected light right here in the iris, in this lower section, so that the top section of the iris is darker and the bottom section of the iris is a little bit lighter especially if they've got a uh, especially if there's a, uh, a, a a light bright surface in front of them so I'll go ahead and put that in okay Uh, the other thing to notice is that the highlights, especially in the eyes, uh, because the eyes are shiny, uh, all highlights are uh, always the shape of the light source. So if your light source is square, the highlight's going to be square. Okay? Uh, we might, might get down to there. If the nose is particularly shiny, you, sh you might see a square highlight. Okay? All right. Um, questions? What about the ear? Oh, the ear. Oh, yeah, I forgot the ear. Forgot Same. the ear. Let's do the ear and the light. Okay. So, uh, oh, no. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Aww. Yeah, that's all right. I'll do So one of the things that we, we want to do is we want to make the ear, um, not as contrasting. We don't want to have brights and darks on the ear. Why not? It brings it forward. Right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to keep it within a certain certain area of gray. Now uh, we might want to pay attention to the temporalis muscle here, the cheekbone, right? So there is a something called the side of the face before we get to the ear, right? Um, and so I'll go ahead and, and maybe render a little bit of that, just a different value. Here's the jawline. Okay, so I'm giving the, the side of the face a different value than the front of the face. a little stronger cheekbone shadow. Might be the way to do it. Okay. And then, uh, and then the ear now. So um, one thing to look for, did I get it right? Yeah, I think so. I got it the right size. Um, find out where the tragus is. Okay. And the tragus is going to usually pick up some light. Okay, and uh, we'll see where the, 
where the helix, the, the bottom portion of the helix is, and here is the top portion. Okay. In this case, I think I'll make the anti-helix, well, I'll make it come out a little bit. Remember, the anti-helix is this Y-shaped with a little, little darkening underneath. Tragus, anti-tragus, they're both coming together. And then we get into the earlobe. Is it attached? Is it separate? All those questions you got to ask. I'm going to get rid of that outline. Okay. I'll darken in under the helix, because that's where my shadow is going to be. There's going to be a cast shadow from the helix onto the anti-helix. Uh, a shadow perhaps under the lobe, and a core shadow there as well. It's the cauliflower ears. Yeah, he's got a really big anti helix. Okay. And then after all that, I might just go soft, because I don't want it to stick out, right? Um, now, if you wanted it to, if, if, if you were drawing an ear, then you would come in and you would draw the top plane of the anti-helix, the side plane of the anti-helix. You might put a little highlight in the, uh, the anti-helix as it's coming out. Uh, put a highlight on the tragus, a highlight on the lobe, right? So you would just uh, uh, accentuate those contrasts.